Here's another type of file. These are called rotary files and we've all used these and they can be used in an electric drill or drill press or your uh, your uh, die grinder. This particular batch here is carbide. Very hard, very expensive. You can always feel the extra weight of carbide and a slightly different color if they're not marked. Here's another batch of uh, more common type rotary files. They come in every shape and size that you can imagine. Here are some smaller ones that are also carbide. I am not a big fan of rotary files. I haven't had all that much luck with them so I avoid using them even though I have quite a large quantity. Here's another type of file that we all know about and dread and that is the dental burr or the dental file and every dentist can provide you with some of these that they consider dull. Oh how we hated these but sometimes these are useful on real small work. I don't believe I've ever used these. And probably the smallest file of all is the file that is used for you know what these are? Also in the dental chair, that's for the dreaded root canal. And you don't ever want your dentist to break one of these off in your tooth. But look at how small those are. That's why it costs $900 for a root canal. And you know what? They don't really hurt all that much anymore, a root canal, except when you pay for it. You know, some people carry a file on their person at all times, and uh, some of them may not even realize it, but that's in the form of the ubiquitous uh, fingernail trimmer, and they have a little file on them. I never found them to be very sharp, but uh, it's handy when you break a nail when you're on the road. But I prefer to use an ignition file. This is quite handy for filing uh, fingernails. And uh, women always carry a file in their purse but sometimes they carry what they call an emery board I think that's what my wife uses but any one of these files here a flat file or, or a, uh, a knife type file is particularly nice to file uh, fingernails especially if it has that safe edge this one doesn't but some of them have a safe edge so you're filing just your fingernail and not your skin Now if you have files that do not have a safe edge, you can always grind them off on the belt sander. One type of file I haven't mentioned yet is the lathe file called a long angle file. And I used to have these in the school shop and I had the handles painted yellow and had one hanging on each lathe but didn't get much cooperation from the kids in regards to putting them where they belonged. and and they just get abused like every other file but uh, particularly handy for for filing on the lathe I do not even own one now I looked among my hundreds of files and did not have one do not have one so uh, and I'm not sure you can buy them I don't see them in the catalogs anymore but uh, uh, look for a long angle lathe file if you can find them if you, if you do a lot of filing on your lathe as your files become old and dull and worn and so on, uh, several people that I've talked to like to uh, keep them in uh, separate categories, and Keith Fenner is one, where uh, use uh, the older files for roughing work and keep them separate from the, your sharper, newer files, which you might be using on the lathe, and uh, uh, maybe knock off uh, uh, the real large amount of work with the old file and then finish with a nice a clean newish file and you can separate them by painting the handles on them different colors. Also you should have a separate file for filing brass because the difference between a brand new file and a used file when filing brass is remarkable. So if you do a lot of brass work keep separate files for brass and if you're in a shop where there are many different men, that's going to be difficult to do unless you own the files. But in your home shop, it's rather easy to keep them separate. I never did like die filers or what we call a filing machine, but 
if you do have uh, one of those, those are regarded as uh, machine filers and you need to use a special type of file with those which are called machine files. And they have the teeth cut in the other direction so that they file on the downward stroke rather than the upward so that it keeps the work on the table. And this is what the die filer or machine files look like and they have a shank on one end to be held in the clamp that holds them into the machine. Those will have to be special ordered. You, you will never find those locally in a hardware store. They come in a wide variety also of shapes and coarsenesses. Many people are not aware that uh, Dewall and possibly other companies had uh, filing machines or band filing machines. Some of them were just attachments for a regular a metal cutting bandsaw, but they also made a, a specialized a band filing machine and the files were in segmented pieces so that they would wrap around the wheels and they uh, were uh, available in different coarsenesses and shapes and you could do very fast filing. This isn't a very good picture but it's the only picture I could find of a band filing machine. I used to have one at the high school. These are probably the four most common methods of using a file in a metal shop. Number one, deburring corners and edges and we do that every day and I even keep a file on the bench top at all time for those purposes. Straight filing which is regular filing that uh, you most commonly would do. Three is draw filing and that is to produce a fine finish on the work and then lathe filing which is something we uh, quite often do to bring a piece down to size. Here are some common mistakes we make when using a file so we'll call these don'ts when filing. One, don't use a file without a handle. Two, don't use a worn out or dull file. Throw them away. Three, don't use a dirty file. Be sure and clean it before each use. Four, don't use a brand new or a real good file on cast iron scale, which we call fire scale, and doing that is very detrimental to the teeth on a file. Five, don't use a very fine file for filing soft metal because it's going to load on you. Six, don't use a bastard file for finishing. It's meant for roughing. Conversely, seven, don't use a smooth file for roughing work. Eight, don't let a file uh, hit the hardened vice jaws because you can dam damage it or dull it. Nine, don't allow files to scrape together in a drawer or on the bench top. Ten, don't file too much before testing the work for size, and that's if you're fitting. And eleven, don't lay your file on the lathe bed, because this is very damaging to a lathe bed and the ways over a period of years. Probably the most common use of a file is for deburring. So after you've drilled holes, you're always going to have a little bit of a burr there, or after you've sawed it or machined it or whatever you've done, just take a hand file and uh, knock the burrs off. Remember a file cuts on the forward stroke, and then if you've got saw marks or saw burrs, knock it off like that, break your corners, it gives the work a finished appearance. Same thing with a, a work like this. If, if there are burrs on it, often we want to break the corners on finished material. Now if you've got a, a vise or some other uh, tool, whatever it may be, and it's been banged around or whatever, uh, often you're going to have little burrs so you can strike the bottom of it here and any high spots will be removed. Here's the proper way to hold a file when you're filing uh, almost any work. Hold your work in the vise in the protective caps and the, vi and the uh, file can be used like this. Notice the way I'm holding it. 
and this is a single cut mill file or hand file. And there's a bit of a burr here, so we'll knock that off. And all I'm doing is dressing this down and cleaning it up. Now this is draw filing, and draw filing is a finishing operation using a single cut file to give you a real fine finish. And notice the way the file is held. And you can move to clean spots on your file. Make sure your file remains clean because if you get pinning, it's going to scratch the work. You can get a very fine finish on your work by draw filing. This is an aluminum casting and I'm going to file the uh, gate off of it using a double cut flat bastard file. And notice how aggressive this file is and how quickly it can uh, remove the material. Of course this is aluminum and it's soft. <laughs> following the curvature of the work. I had a little vibration on the work so I choked the work up a little bit closer to the vise. and then it can be finished off with a finer file like this single cut. And that'll give a very fine finish. Now let's talk about filing on the lathe. Be sure and uh, have a board handy and always lay your file on the board or down on the chip pan. Make sure your file is clean and absolutely make sure that you have a handle on it. Many people have been injured when the file kicked back and the tang got driven into their wrist and you will bleed profusely. Stay away from the chuck when you're filing. Extend the work out a little bit if possible. But this can potentially be a dangerous operation and use about 600 RPM. Filing on the lathe is done to uh, improve the finish, although if you have a real bad finish, there's something wrong with your tool and the, and the rest of your setup. So uh, that is not the primary purpose, and, and uh, sometimes that's a remedy that poor machinists use to, to get a good finish. But sometimes you want to improve the finish a little bit. But uh, we also want to take off burrs, we want to uh, chamfer the corners, and uh, often we're coming down to a final size or a fit. For instance, we're going to have a press fit or we're going to uh, uh, make the shaft fit into a bearing or something like that. We might want to take off just a little bit of material. Now if you're filing to a shoulder, use a file that has a safe edge if you do not want to damage the shoulder. First I'll break the corners. strokes. Use the benefit of the length of the file. You may need to stop and clean the file frequently. If you get pins in your file, you're going to scratch the work. If you are uh, filing
scaling to a certain dimension, stop often and take a measurement. I just stopped to clean the file and you may benefit by putting some chalk on it. Remember that a file cuts on the forward stroke. So lift the file off the work when you return it to avoid dulling the file. If you have a lot of material to remove, you might want to use an older file initially to, to, to remove some of the, of the material and then use your brand new file to finish it off. Take good care of your files. Be very careful to stay away from the chuck jaws such that the, the file could get kicked back at you. When filing on the lathe, make sure that you have your sleeves rolled up or wear a short sleeve shirt and keep your left elbow very high above and away from all of danger of the chuck jaws. As in this example. Here's another example of uh, filing and here I'm going to uh, change a round hole into a square hole and I've got uh, a square file and I've got a triangular file, three corner file and here's a, uh, a smaller file that's uh, got one safe edge so I might use that when I get into the corner. So let's stick this in the vise and I have uh, taken a half inch hole and I've uh, just scribed lines around it and it could be any shape or any size and this is a eighth inch aluminum. Now this is a three quarter three corner file. Square file. This aluminum files very easily. Now this is a, I'm going to call it a pillar file with a safe edge. And I'll run the safe edge this way. Now this way. That way I can file one side without filing the other side. And I'm just going to do one corner here to give you the the gist of this. And how quickly I have filed the one corner and then I would just do the others in a similar manner. But uh, did you notice how I use that safe edge so that I don't over file past my layout line. And you could do any internal shape in any material with this. The thicker the material however the more likely you are to be out of square when you look at the back side. So you might want to do layout lines on the back side as well. I know this has been a long, long video, but there's a lot to say about files. And files were even more important years ago in the days of gun ma making and things like that before they had the milling machine and other tools. Uh, they used filing fixtures and a, and a great many of the uh, parts for muskets were made by filing in these fixtures so it's it was an important a method of shaping and finishing steel and to some extent it certainly certainly still is try to find yourself a copy of this file philosophy book by Nicholson you'll find them on uh, eBay it's a most interesting book and uh, there might be a little bit more in there than what you want to know but uh, older metal textbooks also spend a lot of time uh, talking about files and, and their uses and uh, they call this bench work years ago and a lot of that was done in industrial art shops. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.